Well, it's 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening, and it's time for the Word of the Lord. I want to thank all of you that are joining us to uh, hear the Word of the Lord presented to you and uh, pray that it touches your hearts and ministers uh, life to you and life more abundantly. So that's the, the power of His Word, and that is what God desires to do in your life and my life. And uh, it is so exciting to know that we serve a God who truly loves us who really cares for us. There's a lot of people in our lives over the time of our life that have said, I love you, and then shown that their love wasn't uh, like God's love. It was conditional. And God's is unconditional. And uh, I thank God for that, that uh, he is a God that can love purely and wholly and will forgive and draw us to him. And uh, so praise the Lord. Well, uh, can't say we're living in boring times. Uh, this is probably the most exciting time of uh, my life I've ever seen with all the things that are going on around us and as we are marching to the return of Jesus Christ. And so it's, um, it's a time to really be digging in. It's a time to really be looking at our own hearts, making sure that we're right with God, making sure that we are uh, accessing all of the things promises of God, the benefits of God. And how do we do that? We do that by being obedient servants of the Lord, by seeking Him and hearing His voice and then obeying Him and fulfilling His plan for our life. So tonight we're going to be looking at the kingdom of God. And uh, some things I just want to say, it's going to be simple. I don't think it's going to be a long message tonight, but we'll see where the Holy Spirit leads us. But the kingdom of God and the powers of darkness are truly at battle right now. Folks, this is, uh, I've, I've never uh, seen in my life the powers of darkness working so hard, working overtime, to, uh, and very visible, uh, not hidden in the shadows anymore, out in the open, uh, working to bring about uh, the systems and the kingdom of the Antichrist. Uh, I know we're approaching that day, so uh, it doesn't make me bewildered, but uh, it actually makes me somewhat excited. Uh, I'm not rejoicing in what's happening to people's lives and what's, what's going on in our world, but I am rejoicing that it tells us that the kingdom of God, Jesus, is coming for us and that we're going to uh, be in his presence uh, and that holy everlasting presence of God. So as we think about this battle that's going on, we have to make sure that we are walking right with God because the enemy, the only way he can defeat you or I is if he gets us to not properly walk in the kingdom. And by that, I mean, if we walk according to the flesh, what does the word of God say? It says we're gonna reap corruption in this world. But if we walk according to the Spirit, hallelujah, we're going to reap eternal salvation. So as we walk with God, and that salvation comes when we confess it, we're going to endure and receive the blessings of God. But we need to really look at ourselves because in the heat of the battle, many times we make decisions, we say things that we shouldn't be saying. In the heat of the battle, we are misdirected by our flesh or our carnal desires. We are misdirected in our purpose because all of a sudden we think our purpose becomes God's purpose. And uh, we need to know his purpose in our life. The word of God says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. That's so important again that the only way to get that interaction, uh, the only way that we can cause God, if you will, to draw nigh to us is when we're drawing nigh to him. He responds to faith. He responds to us seeking him. He responds to us desiring him. And uh, so that's the way we have a, a relationship in God. He's doing many things that we don't deserve, obviously. Uh, we don't deserve salvation. But yet he wants us to mature, to grow, and to be co-laborers uh, in this kingdom work, in this kingdom uh, development here on earth. 
as we establish his kingdom by speaking his word, by living by faith, believing in him, and allowing him to lead us. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, in verse 9, it says, In this manner, therefore pray. You all know it. It's the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, uh, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to stop right there because in the simplicity of his kingdom, uh, and I'm just going to break it down really simple here, uh, his kingdom is his presence and his word. That's his kingdom. Jesus Christ is the living word of God. His presence dwells within us. He, he gives us eternal life when we believe in him and confess him with our, our mouth and believe in our heart. So the kingdom of God is, is his presence and it's his word, his directives for our life as he reveals his plan for us. And uh, folks, the word of God itself uh, shows us a plan for a moral life, shows us the plan for a husband and wife relationship, parent and child relationship, employer-employee relationship. It tells us how to forgive. It tells us all of these things. That's God's plan for our life. Now, we have another plan for our life, and that's the things that we're going to do for his kingdom. And he has a job for all of us. He has a destiny, a plan for every one of us. And we need to draw close to him to know what that plan is. But when we say, thy kingdom come, we need to understand we're not asking God to come and debate with us what he should do. We're not asking God to come and ask us, what do you uh, think we ought to do, and then uh, do what we say. He is a king. It is a kingdom. He already has his plan laid out for us. Before we were even born, he laid out a plan for us. And uh, that plan is what God desires us to complete. Uh, that's why God says when we enter the kingdom, we should hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, not only well done in doing the work that he wanted us to do as a Christian, as a believer, as his child, but also how he changed us, how we let his word transform us and renew our minds. And when I say we let, we have to believe. We have to receive this word from the king. So let's just take kingdom and king uh, for a moment and look at it. You know, if he is the king, he is the sole ruler. There is no one else that rules in a true kingdom. We are his subjects. And as subjects of the king, we are to do his bidding. We are to do that which he asks us to do. Now, in a kingdom, folks, there's many, many jobs that have to be done. Uh, there's the king's cook. There's the king's uh, butler, if you will. There's the king's horseman. There's the king's army. There's the king's farmers. There's all the things you can think of that makes a kingdom function for life. And so he has different things for each of us to do. But there is one thing we all must do, and that is to be like him in our soul, in our mind, renewed in him. Different jobs, different personalities, but we are to surrender to this King, our King, Jesus Christ, to our Father, to the Holy Spirit, and the leadership of the Spirit of God. So the kingdom we're praying for is God, bring your kingdom. Now, many times when battles are going on, like we're seeing right now in the world, people are asking God, you know, God, your kingdom come. God, you come and settle this. You come and do this. Well, we're already making sort of our plans on what we want God to do. And so we must simply come to God, study his word, because I believe his word will show us the most important things that we should be doing. Again, everybody's saying, you know, what do you want me to do, God? What's my calling? What's, what's my purpose? Well, first off, it's to be like Jesus. It's to be holy. It's to be transformed. It's to be changed. By the renewing of your mind, you put on Christ. That is your absolute most important job as a Christian is to be like him, irregardless of what he asks you to do 
by the preaching of the gospel, the ministry of the, of the word of God, by having that loving kindness that reaches out and touches people. In fact, it's not really Jesus doing those things unless you have put on Christ, unless you've done the one thing that is super important, and that is to be renewed in him. Uh, it's one thing to uh, give food to the hungry. Even the world does that. It's to do it in the name of Jesus. It's to do it in his character, in his nature. Then it's gonna have a completely different impact on a person's life. Because then you're not just giving someone something to eat, you're teaching them how to be a fisherman, how to, how to walk with God, how to live in his provision. So again, let's just, there's a king and we're submitted to it. And uh, most people don't like the word submit. They don't like the word surrender. And that's why a lot of people are having struggles with what's going on in our nation right now because we want to rise up against the evil. Well, as a Christian, folks, we rise up against the evil by doing the will of God, by doing what God has called us to do. And first off, that's to love, that's to forgive, that's to walk in holiness, but it's also to go forth and preach the gospel, to go forth and be a witness, a faithful witness to the kingdom of God, a faithful witness to our Lord and, and Savior, Jesus Christ. So many things going on, but truly your kingdom come is going to have a real effect on your life. Again, some people just want the kingdom to come and settle the issues, but when the kingdom comes, he's coming in you. He's not just coming in the outward, he's coming in you. Thy kingdom come. The prayer is about me being changed, forgiving those who trespass against me, making provision for me. Amen. So we need to understand that when the kingdom comes, our life changes dramatically if we've been living as a carnal Christian, as a Christian who is centered on the things of this world rather than on the things of the kingdom of God. So God's presence can be very disruptive. And uh, when I say disruptive, it's not disruptive in a negative way because it's the truth, it's the spirit of God, but it's disruptive because the flesh doesn't want to live that. The flesh is already predetermined and the human carnal mind has already predetermined what kind of answer we want, what kind of movement of God we want, what we want God to do. And folks, uh, when, when we are standing in God and his word and in faith, then God is, is moving for us. When we don't, it says a double-minded man receives nothing from God, but a man who's centered in Christ causes God to fulfill his word. And when I say causes, God's God. He's going to do his word. He fulfills his word. But it takes us believing that word and living that word for us to see the fulfillment of all that God has for us in that word. So it's very important because we are co-laborers with Christ. So we're working together with God. Kingdom come. When I say that, then I have to be prepared for change in my life. If you study the revivals that have happened throughout history, revivals utterly turn people's lives upside down. They're going almost 24 hours a day, meetings, God's moving, God's healing, God's calling, God's saving, God's doing all kinds of things. Churches that have had outpourings, it takes every bit of resources for them to, to be able to meet the needs of all the people coming in and to have the workers to help those people, to minister to them in the, in the presence of God, the life of God, to meet their needs. It takes prayer warriors praying. It takes evangelists witnessing. It takes, you know, people flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. It takes, it takes all of us. And so when we say, thy kingdom come, we have to be prepared for the work that's going to come with it because faith without works is dead. And when his presence comes, when his kingdom comes, and yes, it's already in us, but we're, when we pray this, thy kingdom come, we're, we're wanting a manifestation of God. We're, we're seeking God to show himself strong because we're saying thy will be done after it. So every day we're, we're needing an infilling, an outpouring of God into us that 
God can cause then his will to be done. And again, we can say, well, God, let your will be done over here in, in uh, the stock market. Let your will be done, Father, in, in the uh, riots that are going on. Well, that's all wonderful, but this prayer, again, is specifically centered around you as a believer. And yes, we can, we can certainly pray it for all the things that are going on in this world because we're praying for the people. We love them. We want them to be saved. We want them to know the kingdom of God. But first, it has to come and change us because a prayer of faith is what pleases God. So it has to be real in us. It has to have changed us on the inside. So, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh, wow. That means my will has to be what? Be put down. My will, my desire, my anger, my emotions, everything I'm wanting God to do that is causing me to call out to him has to be put down unless it's his spirit that is moving us and it is his love and his passion that is loving, uh, sending us to him, then we're, we're going to miss what's happening because we don't change. And folks, if we don't change, we're not going to see the presence of God come the way we want. When we look at the history of Israel and the birth of the church and the times of Jesus, when obedience, joyful obedience, was in the saints, in the believers in Israel, when they were obedient to God, God blessed them. Again, the New Testament says the same thing. I've already quoted you one, one of the scriptures. You know, a double-minded man receives nothing from God. So we have to put down that, that fleshly mind, that carnal mind, and allow change to come in. So, folks, as a, a if you will, a revolution is going on in our nation. We don't know if it's going to completely change uh, transition our nation uh, depends on what happens in this election it depends on what people do because people could go crazy but whatever's happening it causes uh, a tumultuous spirit a troubling spirit and then if God is trying to deal with us we're troubled and grieved inside of our soul we can miss what God is doing so we have to we have to make a true determination that I want to be obedient to God, that I desire to do the things in faith that will allow God or cause God to move in our lives the way he wants to move. But he's limited, folks, and everybody said, no, God's not limited. He can do whatever he wants. His word literally declares, again, that if we're not walking in faith, he's not going to move for us. If we are walking in faith, he will move for us. The question he asked, and you've heard me say this so many times, told his disciples, when I return, will I find faith? Will I find people wanting to be different on the inside, activating that, wanting to live for me on the outside, activating that so that I can flow in their life and use them for my glory and honor? God wants us to seek him. That's why he tells us to, to ask tells us to, to uh, seek. It tells us to knock and the door shall be opened. There's things we have to do to cause things of heaven's promises to happen, to open, the door to open, to finding God. We, if we don't seek, we don't find. So all of this is dependent upon us. And what the enemy is trying to do is to get us to try to shortcut the kingdom of God and its way or to demand it be done our way. And that's where we miss what God is really truly doing and get ourselves in trouble and become weak in the Lord. Instead of strong in the Lord, we become weak in spirit and in mind. We wax cold, which again is the warning of the last day's church by the word of God, that many will wax cold, that there will be a great falling away, that there will be the church of Laodicea, which is lukewarm, so, folks, we have to guard ourselves and understand the enemy is using all the tactics he can to get you and I to get our eyes off of Jesus, to get our eyes off of the promises, to get our eyes off of the purpose and the plan of God. And first off, it's to make us holy. 
He is holy, therefore we shall be holy. We need to be walking towards that. We need to, to be charging, if you will, into the things of God to, to be that. And that should be our great desire in our heart is to please him. And again, because of everything that's going on, it's so easy to want to please ourselves. It's so easy to want to not fight the fight. It's so easy to give up. It's so easy then to just sort of throw it back on God's lap and say, well, he'll do whatever he does. Well, God's got a plan. But again, we're co-laborers with him. We have to live in his word and in his will and in his life. James chapter 4 and verse 7 uh, tells us something about this kingdom of this world. And it is, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Again, God gives us instructions. He is not saying, oh, just stand by and watch me move. He's saying it takes us moving so that he can bring his word to pass because he only honors faith. Abraham believed and it was accounted unto him to righteousness. Your faith is what got you saved. Your faith is what made you righteous. In your daily walk, your faith is what causes God or allows God or God says I'll do this when you uh, begin to walk in this and believe it's impossible to please God without faith then God's going to move in our life so he says therefore submit yourself to God submit yourself to God in other words you've got to be seeking him for his will after all the Lord's prayer thy kingdom come thy will be done. Not my will, not my kingdom. Your kingdom, your will. His. Amen. That is what God is saying. Submit yourself to God. Amen. We are submitted servants of the Lord. And when submitted servants are faithful, God is well pleased and his promises kick into effect for us and God begins to bless us in greater measure. It's not that God won't work in our lives if we don't, but we'll not see the full reward. And he talks about that. Get your full reward. Not partial, not part. Get your full reward that God has for you. He's a loving God. He cares for you. He wants to lead you. He wants to take you there. But it takes obedience. Just like if you have a disobedient child kicking and fighting and screaming, it's hard to get them to follow you. It's hard to get them. And what do we do? We may give them a timeout, but they also sometimes lose rewards. That timeout is a timeout from TV or their cell phone or their computer. That timeout may say, you don't get the ice cream after dinner. Whatever it is, there's things that we do not receive because... We were not compliant, joyfully compliant. God wants us to submit to him so that he can bring about the full benefit of our salvation in our life so we can experience it because he loves us and his salvation is awesome. It is powerful. It is glorious. It is the greatest joy of our lives. Amen. So he says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. Resist what? The devil doing what? Trying to pull you away from your submission to God. That's what's happening right now in our world, in our politics, in our nation, in, uh, in the way uh, products are, sir, uh, are, pr are promoted in front of us. It's the enemy always trying to get us hungry and thirsty for the things of this world to love the world more than we love the light of God. So the enemy is always pulling at us, tugging at us. He's trying to get us so confused and so much in turmoil that we will not call out to God and seek him the way we should. We'll just, we'll just uh, say, God, 
your kingdom come, God, your will be done, and then we'll do our thing. Well, you can't keep doing your thing and be asking God for his will to come. God says, again, that it's impossible to please me without faith. The men and women of God throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, they had miracles because they were obedient, joyfully obedient, because they were faithful to the word of God, not because they were just sitting around saying, well, whatever will be, will be. They were faithful to the word of God. They dug in. And that is where God then begins to flow in our lives. So we're co-laborers with him. I just want to say that again. We're working together, and God is the one who has set the plan. It is his will. It's his, his way, not ours. But as we learn to walk in that submission, God moves in our lives in greater and greater ways. And he uses us in greater and greater ways. And right now, when all this is going on, we need Christians who can be used of God, who can truly be used of the Lord. Not with a gun and not with a sword, but with the sword of the Spirit, filled with God. Amen? Amen. I mean, go back. Look at the, look at the things that happened in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Peter wanted to use a sword. He cut off the ear of one of the, one of the soldiers. Jesus said, hey, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. He said, we have a new sword. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the word of the living God. It's God's plan, God's will in our lives. And if we'll simply dig into that, not let this turmoil get us stirred up. And again, folks, you've heard me. I've been speaking and bringing this type of a message to you now for months because it's not our job to go out and fight. It's our job to come in and fight and then go and be a faithful, glorious witness to God, for God, to the world. God says, do the work of an evangelist and prove your ministry. Do the work of an evangelist and prove your ministry. So you, you prove your ministry by going out and being a faithful witness, by going out and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He says, I send you out in the midst of wolves. He said, they're going to put you in prison. They're going to beat you. He told them all these things that are going to happen. He didn't say pick up the sword and fight. He said, go out and be a faithful witness, and I will be with you confirming my word with signs following. In other words, as we stand on his word, God again moves, and he confirms his word with signs following. So praise the name of the Lord. Uh, then it says here that draw near to God and he will draw nigh to you or near to you. So again, we, he's made a step for us in giving us Christ, but now it's up to us to step up to the plate, if you will. And when we step up to the plate, he'll step up and meet us. Again, it takes an action on our part because if we're just going to stay away from home base, uh, he's not going to step up. His mercy will still move on our life trying to get us back to that. He'll continue to try to draw us back, but it's up to us to be obedient. It's up to us to listen to God. He who hath an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So he's telling us to come back. The seven churches, he was telling them, come back, come back. Draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. I'll reveal myself greater and greater and greater to you. Well, folks, he, he says that to the last day's churches. He's telling us that the church is going to be drawn back. At least that he's going to extend the invitation. It's up to us to listen. And yet it says that the majority will wax cold. So, folks, a great falling away. So we're not listening to the invitation because we're listening to so many other things in our life. So yeah, very, very important. And then he says, cleanse your hands. In other words... Jesus died to cleanse us, but we've got to come to him to receive that cleansing. For if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all our iniquity and unrighteousness. So we have to come. We have, again, we're, we're, we play a part in how we walk with God. We have to hear, 
We have to receive it, we have to believe it, and we have to activate it in our lives. And that causes God to move in our lives. Amen. Because he will fulfill the word that we are walking in. He will fulfill it. Never, is return, never returns void. Always accomplishes that which it's set out to do. So 1 John and uh, chapter 5 and verse 19 the word of the Lord says to us, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Wow, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. But we are of God. So in other words, the enemy is trying to sway. He's trying to, to powerfully move people towards his desire which is to overthrow the kingdom of God, which is to get mankind to sin against God and against one another, to get us to take each other's lives. The enemy is swaying the world towards darkness, but we are of God. So we should remove ourselves from that stream of that swaying. It's like, if you will, a river We've got to stay away from that river because it's swaying us. It's sweeping us away into the things of darkness. And we're getting all, again, as I've been saying the last few weeks, trouble in our soul, turmoil in our soul that needs to be settled so that we can walk in the peace of God. When, when we receive the peace of God and believe it, God is moving with that peace in us. His kingdom has come into my life because it is a kingdom of peace for Jesus is the prince of peace so I'm walking in that presence and his will is being done in my life because he told me I could have peace that passes all understanding able to guard my heart and my mind so again we receive it we activate it that's God's presence that's us responding submitting and all of a sudden things are moving the way God has always meant them to move in our lives. And we are finding this presence and this will of God so satisfying and so wonderful in our lives that it gives us that joy that is inexpressible. So praise the name of the Lord. God has great things for you. Amen. Even in the midst of all the trials. Hallelujah. God will take care of you. He will move in your life. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So he says that the world lies under. In other words, he's put pressure on them, and they've submitted to that pressure. So God tells us to submit to the eternal weight of glory, if you will, to allow God's glory to set upon us, and then when that eternal weight of glory sets on us, we are free from the pressure, the sway of the enemy. And people will say, well, that's just talking about unbelievers. Well, if you've been a Christian any length of time, you know that the enemy's come and tempted you. He tempted Jesus, he'll tempt you. That's the pressure. That's the, he'll give you a thought. Take every thought captive. New Testament, take every thought captive. Bring it in submission. Why? Because it's a swaying instrument of the enemy wanting to pull us away from the glory of God that God has before ordained that we should walk in and experience and know him in an awesome, powerful, wonderful way. So we see that there's a two kingdoms here. There's two powers at work. God, the omnipotent, glorious, God almighty, and the powers of darkness moving against us and they use the world they use other people but god uses other people and he's te he teaches us many things from how he created the world he talked about the vineyard amen the enemy will dry up the vineyard to get you to believe that you're not going to make it god will make the vineyard plentiful so we need to walk with god so that we are not swayed by the enemy but walk in the light and the power and the love of Jesus Christ. But we have to make that decision. The kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. It's going to 
bring a real change. And it could mean a battle going on in your soul because Paul described it as a battle. My spirit warth against my flesh. He said warth, fights, fights against my flesh because my flesh doesn't want to do what God wants. My flesh wants to do what I want. And so God says, look, if you're going to ask for my kingdom to come, you need to know there's going to be a battle inside of you in some areas of your life. Other areas, you're already there. You're ready to receive everything that's in that kingdom in that area of your life. But other areas, it's hard for you to surrender. God says, if you're going to pray this, you have to be ready for the battle. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Again, that brings change. And a lot of people don't like change. A lot of people just don't like change because I have a fear of the unknown. Well, a fear of the unknown is not from heaven. It's not from heaven. Who's the author of fear? Satan, the powers of darkness. God isn't. God tells us to have a reverential fear of him, but he's not the, he's not the author of fear of change. I mean, when Jesus came, he changed the world. We should be excited about the change. When he came into your life, he changed you. And it was good. It delivered you maybe from drugs or alcohol or sexual addiction. It, it may have caused your marriage to get whole and be healed. It caused you to forgive those who have hurt you in the past. All of a sudden, burdens were going off of you because God was doing a great work in you. And he's still doing it. He still wants to do it. He isn't finished with you yet. He just wants us to jump in and, uh, if you will, help him. I mean, you know, God doesn't need our help, but yet he does in the sense that we have to believe and he tells us to submit. Amen? Hallelujah. So God wants us to flow in his life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 4, it says this, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. Again, he says there's an enemy, and he puts blinders on. And You can say, well, I had blinders on when I wasn't saved, but God took the blinders off. Well, don't think the enemy's not going to try to put more blinders on. He's got a whole box of them, and uh, he'll use every one of them. He'll use every trick he can. He knows what caught you in your past, and he'll try to catch you in your future with the same thing. If he can't do it with the same thing, he'll try it with other things. So, folks, as this battle is going on in the world, we need to see the battle that God's wanting to fight inside of us to cause us to truly submit to him, to cause us to surrender to the kingdom of God, the king of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Again, it's not a democracy. And we in the United States... Uh, you know, and, and countries that have democracy. We like to have our voice. We like to tell them, we elected you. You need to do it our way. Special interest groups do that all the time. Uh, you know, uh, people will go up and talk with the senators and the congressmen, and they're trying to get them to sway their way. And we've seen our country changed because of individuals and groups going and saying, you know, we want this done. We want this done. We hired you. We pay your wages because you get paid because of our taxes. So we get this mindset that we can come to God the same way. And we can't. You can't come to God and bargain with him about, well, that's okay for them, but I'm a special interest group. And I want my special interest taken care of. Now, when I say special interest group, I'm not talking about minorities or anything like that. I'm talking about your special interest. I want you to be the God that does this. I want you to be the God that allows this. And God's not here to bargain with us. God is here to show us the way. God is here to illuminate our path, not make a new path for us, to illuminate the path that has already been laid for us. God's purpose, God's plan for your life. Right now, the enemy truly is trying to get people to derail their purpose and God's plan in their life. 
to go off track. And folks, how many of you know when a train goes off track, it's dangerous to all those that are on it and all those that are around it when it goes off the track. Well, Christians, we hurt people when we go off the track. We hurt ourselves when we go off the track. We got to stay the course, the course that God has set. Paul said, I finished my course with joy. Amen. Well, if he finished the course, the course had to be laid out. He had to know what he was doing, where he was going to do it, how he was going to do it. And God related that to him throughout his life. God would open doors for him. God would tell him to go here and go there. God would give him special unction. Well, folks, we are to follow God in the same manner. And it's when we again come and say, thy kingdom come. Wow, we're really, we're really putting a challenge on our own lives. It's a great challenge. It's a good challenge. It's what we should be doing. But boy, it's a, it's a cha challenge that's going to bring battles because we have to renew our mind and put on Christ. We have to be more obedient to the living God. That's why God said, submit to me, then resist the devil. Because if you're not submitted to God, you can't resist the devil. Because you'll be walking in your flesh, in your carnal mind. And the enemy will be able to destroy you because you won't take the thoughts captive. So the weapons of our warfare are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. That's because we are in his will. We are submitted to this king of the kingdom we live in. We're no longer citizens here. We're citizens of a new place. We're aliens in this world. We're citizens of heaven, the kingdom of God. And so God wants us to, to fight this fight. And folks, again, as I see all the things going on right now in our lives, it just reminds me that I've got to fight this internal battle great, more, more greatly, more, more distinctly, more earnestly, more fervently in my life. Because God is preparing a, a glorious church without spot or blemish. He's, he's preparing. Our job is to get to be without spot or blemish. Our job is to be a glorious witness of who God is. I've got to fervently fight that fight and then go forth and show the world the glory of my king that resides in me because I've I'm fighting that fight and I'm winning that fight and I'm renewing my mind and I'm putting on Christ and I'm obedient to God and I'm pleasing God. That's the battle we must fight. We can't, we can't fight all the battles that are out here in the world. And when I say we can't fight them, we can fight them through prayer. But what do we pray for? God open their eyes. What did he tell us to do for the lost? Father, remove the blinders that they might see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and thereby be regenerated. We fight by winning souls. We fight by changing men's hearts. But if we're not being changed and we're in turmoil, we can't take them out of it because you can't take somebody where you're not. You can only take them where you are, where you have been, where that path has been blazed in your spirit, man, and in your soul so that you can walk them through it. That's why the stronger help the weak. So it's up to us, it's up to you and I to say, you know what? It's going to be challenging. And some days it's going to be really tough. But Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, this earth and vessel, as it is in heaven. Wow, just the entry of that, giving God praise, hallowed be thy name, and then saying that. How can I say hallowed be thy name if I don't submit to him? If I'm not yielding everything I am to him? If I'm not fighting the fight of faith to become more like him? I can't really say hallowed be thy name because my praise is empty, has no life. So church, let's just get excited about who our God is. Dig into him. 
Hallelujah. Dig into him and allow God to flow in your life. He's a river of life. And the enemy won't be able to sway you the opposite direction. Amen. Well, praise God. We love you and pray that this word has touched your heart and encouraged you tonight. Again, we're co-laborers with him. He wants us to work with him, through him, in him, and by him. Hallelujah. So let's sell out. Let's sell out like never before because time is short. And we got to sell out now. There's not going to be much time left. God says, you know, they worship me in spirit and truth, but there's a time coming when they will not be able to. Boy, we don't want to get in that position. So let's, let's dig in and allow God to move. Hallelujah. Now, just a few announcements before I close. No food giveaway this week. It'll be the following Saturday. So be ready for that. And if you need food, not this Saturday, but the next, please come and get some. Uh, there's not going to be inter any intersection prayer this Saturday. Uh, I'm planning the, the next thing we're going to be doing, and I'm getting all that put together. We'll be doing that the following week. And uh, so it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, and I truly believe our prayers going up are making a tremendous difference, especially when they're mixed with all the other prayers of the saints from all the other churches that are doing such good works and, and encouraging their people and glorifying the Lord. It's so wonderful to be a part of the body of Christ and uh, know that brothers and sisters all around us are, are praying and seeking the face of God. We'll do our part. Thank God they're doing theirs. Hallelujah. So no intersection prayer this Saturday. And uh, so put that, put that aside, but the following Saturday, we will be together, 9 o'clock here at the church. Then Sunday morning, come. Got a great word for you. I want you to be encouraged in the Lord. Come and, and uh, lift up your praises to God. And let's uh, listen and let the word change us some more, transform us. Let that kingdom come. Let his will be done as we allow his word to change and transform us. So praise God. We'll see you uh, Sunday morning. We love you all. God bless you. Let the peace and the grace and the mercy of God fill your soul to overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen.